platforms of giving and that you too can rejoice in the great things that God is doing in your life and in our lives as well. God bless you and God keep you. I want to invite you to the devotional reading from the book of Luke, the fifth chapter. The book of Luke, the fifth chapter. And it is here that you will find these words, commencing at verse 17. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And behold, men brought in a bed, a man which was taken with palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the tilting with his couch into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he saith unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? And who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus received, perceived their thoughts, he answering said unto them, what reason ye in your hearts? Yes, when, whether it is easier to say, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, rise up and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on, upon earth to forgive sins. He said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy couch, and go into thine house. And immediately he rose up before them, and took up that whereupon he lay, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God, and will fill with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. So reads the word of our God. Father, as I told the class this morning, when I prayed for the sick, 
I know you the God that healed the sick back in the ancient days. I know you the same God right now. You can heal right now, Heavenly Master. Then, Lord God, we're praying this morning for those who are going through sadness and grief. We're praying, Father, that you will comfort those who need your comfort this morning. Father God, we're praying for the homeless. We're praying for those that have food for their stomachs this morning. We're praying, oh Lord God, for those in financial distress. We pray, Father, that you'll be their banker this morning. Heavenly Master, as we pray this morning, Lord God, we're praying for America, Heavenly Master. Father, we're seeing things go on in this country that we've never seen happening before, where people are doing all underhanded things to try to hold on to power. But Lord God, I read in your word, don't nobody have power unless you give it to them. And I'm praying, Father, this morning that America's on a slippery slope. And Lord God, if it don't turn back to you soon, America's going to be in a bad mess. And then, Lord God, the church got to speak up now. The church has been silent too long in this country. Where we're letting things go on and not saying anything about it. We have gotten too complacent. Father, you left us here to be the light in this dark and sinful world. And Heavenly Father, we have to be that light that shines bright. Because, Father, you left us here not just for a program, but you left us here to evangelize, to rescue the lost, Help those that, us, that don't know your son Jesus the Christ. And I'm praying, Lord God, that we will be about our mission as a church because it's going to come and ask one day, What have you done in my name? And Father God, we're sitting there and we can't answer. It's going to be bad for somebody. Lord. It's going to be real bad, Lord. Heavenly Father. Now, Lord God, we just thank you this morning and we pray that your presence will be with us in this service. In your son Christ Jesus' name, that we pray these prayers. Let us all say amen. Amen. Show me. 
All right. Because we are a busy church on a busy corner praying for and seeking lost souls to save and set free by and through the risen Son of our Lord, our Savior Jesus Christ, I need to get busy with my first order of business. Do we have any visitors here sharing and worship with us today? If so, will you please stand? today as we tell him in our way thank you also members I want you to know that Ivan Walker is my guest he is a newcomer to the sheriff's office and he's also an Alkanite so for the Alkanites here please you know show him that extra special look <laughs> all right um this was given to me someone has lost it it is a Nokia cell phone. So if you've lost a black Nokia cell phone, please let me know. After service, it will be turned over to uh, the finance department, okay? If indeed you are here visiting, but have a church home, please take back our warmest greetings to your pastor and church family. But but if you are here today and do not have a church home, please know that we would love to have you join our mission to help bring others to Christ. To you who may be watching us virtually, know that we've got some good news to share with you today, so stay tuned in. God is good. He is worthy. He can save, heal, and deliver. May what you experience this day keep you tuning in each Sunday. To our sick and shut-in, please know that we love you. We have some good news to share with you that will help your situation. Just keep tuned in. God is ever-present with you, and we pray for your return to the fold in God's peace. Listen, you all, it is first Sunday, so it is time to celebrate. Songbird, Ms. Blockhart, are you ready to help me today? birthday in April. Will you please stand so we can celebrate you? April birthday. And please remain standing. Okay. Now, if you have an anniversary in April, will you please stand? If you're celebrating an anniversary,
all the time. All right. Uh, hot topics. True Vine Missionary Baptist Church, First Musicians Appreciation, Honoring, Jordan Lakes, Keith Johnson, Jesse Short III, and Mildred Michael. Uh, guests will be the Angelic Stars, the Guys, Jabari Bayman, and Increase and more. April the 14th, which is next Sunday, if I am correct, at 5 o'clock p.m., again, at True Vine Missionary Baptist Church, 1531 East Alexander Street in Greenville. We have some calendar reminders. April the 13th, the second Saturday in this month, this coming Saturday, is set aside for fun and relaxation from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. here at New Hope First Baptist Church. We will praise and paint in fellowship. Remember, we are not looking for Picassos. This is just fun and praise. So please sign up on the sheet in the front at the front entrance table so they can be prepared with the material. Also remember that Sheriff Gaston uh, sent out letters about scams. They are also placed in the front entrance on the table. Other dates to remember, April the 15th through the 17th, the Washington County Baptist, uh, General Baptist Spring Session begins Saturday, April 6th. That was on yesterday, today, April the 7th, County Praise Dance Rehearsal Rehearsal is from 1 to 5.30 p.m. Provided by Beulah Grove and New Hope are the refreshments. Saturday, April 13th, County Praise Rehearsal from 1 to 5.30 p.m. Refreshments provided by Greater St. Peter, True Vine, and St. Paul. On Sunday, April the 14th, the County Praise Dance Rehearsal again from 1 to 5.30. On Monday, April 15th, Youth Night at Greater Hind Street at 6 p.m. The oratorical applications are due at that point. On Sunday, April the 28th, uh, they will have the 2024 oratorical contest at Hind Street Family Life Center at 4 o'clock p.m. The participants should be there no later than 3.30 p.m. Sister Ernestine Collins is the county youth director, and Sister Sheila Washington is the assistant. I'm sorry that I left out. You all hear me? Yeah. A huge hot topic. To Dr. Robert Kimball, pastor of this great church, and Deacon Alfred Rankin Sr., chairman of the Deacon Board. The men, the men, the men of this church would like to support and take great care of their women. New Hope men have recognized that it's the time to show appreciation and give back to those who have done so much for them. Our women, as they say, have supported us throughout the years. Therefore, on Sunday, May 12th, 2024, we will do just this. The men would like to honor the women by hosting, preparing, and serving dinner after morning service. With the church's approval, the men would like to make this an annual event in honor of Brother Nathaniel Chu, Jr., who first started this. Women of New Hope First Baptist Church, they salute you. Any male who would like to volunteer, please contact Brother S.B. Buck. Mr. Buck, will you please stand? Or is Brother Lawrence Brantley here? Mr. Brantley, okay. See either of those two men if you all have any questions, concerns, or if you want to throw in your help, okay, your participation. As always, we need your help in preparing and serving this meal in honor of our women and mothers. May God's blessing be upon all, you all. Thanks in advance, Brother S.B. Buck and Lawrence Brantley. <laughs> Worshippers, it's now time for the good news. What is the good news, Davida? Jesus is the answer for the world today. 
Above him there is no other. He is the way. Enjoy your week. Let Jesus sleep. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Thank you, Davida, for all that you do. Uh, Sister Sessions, uh, I believe we need to hear something from you concerning our upcoming event with the pain and the praise, even though to give us some direction, tell us how it's going to go, because it's coming up to it this following week. Just come on up just for a minute. Just tell us. Let's give her a great big God bless you. Sister Sessions is chairing this event. Amen. And she's going to give us some direction so we'll know how, how we're shaping up. Amen. of you have already signed up and I'm excited about it to have some fun and our young people got involved. Amen. And they were dynamite. Let's see what we can do. Amen. 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 God bless you. I had to get my, get my calculator. It's been 36 years of marriage. Amen. I had to, I had to add it up. If I didn't get it right, Sister Kimmel, she would be hot with me. So I said, I better get my calculator. Amen. <clears throat> it better be saved and sorry. Amen. Y'all will catch that on the way home. Now, we're going to be back in session for Bible study Tuesday night. I wasn't goofing off this past week. I was over at uh, Greater St. Peter teaching a class uh, three nights. And so we'll be back this uh, Tuesday at 7, looking to see all of your smiling faces, uh, new and old. And so we can uh, conclude, try to conclude uh, our study. I am a church member now. Uh, the following week, we will be in session with our uh, Baptist Association, Washington County General Baptist Association, and I will be reaching out to some of you to be there to cast a vote for the new moderator. Uh, Dr. Calvin uh, is, uh, is stepping down, and uh, he is relinquishing that spot. He has held it uh, admirably for several several years and has done a great job and uh, we uh, are in the process of looking for a new moderator there's a person that has already expressed an interest and we need to be present so that we can cast our vote and I will be reaching out to some of you to be there I can't cast all the votes myself amen so I'm going to need some of you there uh, to cast votes, amen. So we'll be reaching out to you for that. This past week, I went to Jackson to see uh, Brother Rankin, and I saw Sister Rankin and the granddaughter, and uh, they were uh, very grateful for my coming, and Brother Rankin has improved tremendously, and we need to continue to lift them up in prayer. Many of you have been calling and have been praying for him and with him. And the Bible says that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Amen. I was, I've been in that, at the hospital uh, there in Jackson University Hospital several times. And the atmosphere is just so conducive for getting well. Amen. It, the atmosphere and just the people. When you go in, some of the doctors, they know you, 
you're not familiar with where you're going, they'll stop and ask you, do you need some help? I see you looking around. You must not know where you're going. <laughs> Amen. And that's a, that's a good culture, don't you think? That's, that's a culture. That's a culture. Everybody say culture. Yeah, you need a culture, a good culture when you have a hospital where people are friendly and people care and, it, and it's clean. Oh, my God. How you were just clean. And I, was, I said, boy, if, you, if you're not feeling well, if you stay around here long enough, the Lord get in it, you'll feel a whole lot better. Amen. So let's just pray uh, that all things will be well and that uh, he can return to his church and, and return to his singing position and with the men and continue to serve the Lord. Amen. 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 And let's keep our prayers going for all persons that are on uh, our sick list. Amen. All right, ushers, come on, help us now.
singing harder because they down one. Amen. Amen. Oh God, we thank you now for this time of preaching and teaching. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' wonderful name I pray. Amen and amen. Go to the book of Malachi chapter Malachi the fourth chapter Amen Amen last book of the Old Testament Malachi the 
fourth chapter, verses one and verse two. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the star. I want to talk about the joy of knowing the Son of Righteousness. The joy of knowing the Son of Righteousness. Christian friends, at the center of our solar system is a star we call the sun. But at the center of the universe is the S-O-N, S-O-N, Jesus Christ. There seems to be a lot of excitement over the eclipse that will take place on tomorrow. Scientists tell us that if you were to take a speck the size of a pinhead uh, from the core of the sun, that speck would be so powerful that it would destroy a human being one million miles away. But yet God in his awesomeness has positioned the sun so that it does not burn us up. And it is not so far away that we would freeze to death. The eclipse tomorrow will be a partial eclipse. Really and truly, there is nothing, absolutely nothing so spectacular about what they're making this noise about. I want to say it again. There's absolutely nothing so spectacular about the eclipse that will take place on tomorrow. For you see, the place where Jesus died on the cross over 2,000 years ago, there too was an eclipse. An eclipse lasts only a few minutes. But the eclipse that took place on the day Jesus died lasted for three whole hours. The eclipse that will take place on the morrow will be partial. It will not be seen all over the world. But the eclipse that happened when Jesus died, the whole earth was covered in darkness. It ain't a thing so spectacular compared to the eclipse that occurred when our Lord was dying on the cross. So today I thought I'd talk to you about the son of righteousness, Jesus Christ. The verse before us calls our attention to several metaphors. The sun, the wings of a bird, uh, and the stall-fed cow. The first line of defense in the text is, the blessedness is given and healing is given to those who have a fear of the Lord. 
I don't think today we have many people that truly fear the Lord. They call on the Lord's name, they use his name like it's just any other name. They handle what belongs to him like it belongs to them. And I mean the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord should not be placed on the floor. When you're at your house, be careful how you handle a Bible. Amen. Don't just put it anywhere. Amen. Don't just let it sit anywhere. Because it represents him. Yes, sir. And it is. And it should be adored. And held in high esteem. Yes, sir. Because it is the word of God. Those that fear his name, the sun will arise over your light, over your darkness, over your problems, over your family, over your business, over your finance, over your health, over your children, over your grandchildren. The sun of righteousness will arise over everything that concerns you. And I don't know if you're aware of it or not. Whatever concerns you concerns God. Whatever you are concerned about, God is concerned about. Even if you're in high school and you're a little anxious over a test that you've got to take and you... This, the passing or the failing of this exam will determine whether or not you will graduate. If you are concerned about that, God is concerned about it also. But if it is, if it concerns you, God is concerned as well. And so, when we look at the text, we will readily see that the wicked will be burnt up. I said the wicked will be burnt up. We got a lot of wickedness in the world today. And not only wickedness, wickedness in high places. Wickedness in high places. Wherever there is a whole lot of money, there is wickedness. Do y'all do y'all understand what I'm saying? Wherever there is money, a whole lot of money, there is wickedness. The Bible says that his light will shine upon you regardless of the darkness around you. It gets dark. Doesn't it? It gets dark in all of our lives. It gets dark. But in the midst of our darkness, God has never leave us our forsake us. It gets dark when we turn on our television sets and we see the injustice of innocent people. It gets dark. It gets dark retirees of Mississippi when you have worked all of your lives and your legislators try to concoct a coup to take your 13th check away from you. It gets dark. But God sits 
in those dark rooms. And he knows what's being said. And God cares about you. He promised that he would never leave us nor forsake us. Yes, it gets dark. Isaiah 60, 1 verse 2 says, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people, but the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. Light is more powerful than darkness. Goodness is more powerful than evil. I don't care who tries to stop your blessing. They can't do it. Whatever God has for you is for you. Always know that God has your back. His light will shine upon you regardless of the darkness around you. When people are making fun of you, they thinking that you ain't going to never do nothing, you ain't never going to be nothing, you ain't never going to succeed, but God is the one that gives us victory. Yes. Yes. Just when they count you out, God counts you in. I said when they count you out, God counts you in. Secondly, his righteousness will break forth into your life. People will start doing you right. Don't worry about people that's doing you wrong. They're going to start doing you right because they're going to get scared. Do you, do you hear what I said? They're going to start doing you right because they're going to get scared. Because they will realize that you belong to the Lord. Yes. And that you are God's child. Yes. And that you belong to him because the light of God's glory shines upon you. Yes. You don't have to be different. You are different. Yes. You different. And the world knows that you are different. You don't have to try to prove it. You don't have to say thank you, Jesus, every third word that you use. The world knows who belongs to the Lord. They know it. It's all over you. It covers you. And everywhere you go, you light up a dark place. You don't believe it, do you? Whenever you are with the Lord, wherever you go, when you leave, you leave the glory of God behind. People will know that you have been with God. The righteous will break forth. And righteousness is nothing more than God's justice and God's goodness. Yes, In the Old Testament, it speaks of judgment and all of that kind of thing. But when we are in the will of the Lord, we don't have to worry about judgment. God's goodness. Justice is the act of being uh, able to enjoy uh, what is right and what is fair without any impartiality. God is just good. He ain't good because we good. He just good because he God. 
even when I ain't, ain't nothing, even when I ain't doing right, he's still good. There's a whole lot of times I can't see why in the world the Lord doing what he's doing in my life and you can't either. He's just good. The thing that we receive, his blessing, and all that he had is not because we doing everything right. God is just good. He just good. He just look beyond our faults and sees our needs. I don't know about you, but God is taking care of us. Yes, he is. God is providing for us. He's making a way for you. He's making a way for you. He's making a way for every child that doesn't know where they're going to get their next meal from. He's making a way. He's making a way uh, for every widow that has lost a loved one and wondering what the next day is going to bring, God is making a way. Amen. Psalm 103 and 6 says, The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. Yeah. Those that are oppressed, the Lord will execute righteousness. For some reason in America, people hate people that are poor. Jesus said, if poor you have, with your own. You should always thank God for what you have. And if you are able to share with others, you should rejoice in being able to share. But never put down somebody because they're poor. If it wasn't for the grace of God, you'd be in that condition yourself. The Lord protects. He protects. The Lord takes care of the least and the left out. Those who are oppressed. Yes, healing does not just mean physical healing. Some people need healing in their emotions. Their emotions are so out of whack. They have no peace. They have no calmness. All healing is not necessarily physical. It can be mental. Yeah, mental. You just can't have any peace of mind. But the Lord has promised that those of us that fear him, he will give us peace of mind. Well, we don't have to worry about anything. It won't have to take a sleeping pill or go to sleep at night. But we can rest in his arms. Knowing that the bandits and the robbers up and down the street, but it shall not come near your dwelling. Well, I got a burglar alarm, Pastor. Yeah, you may have that too. But you need more than that. You need the Lord on your side. You need him to dispatch his angels to encamp around your house while you're there and while you're not there. We need the Lord to be by our side. When I first learned who I am in Jesus, I stood a little taller. Don't you know why the disciples were so bold in their walk and in their profession? They were walking with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. They were walking with the Alpha and the Omega, the one who put the stars in the sky, the one who carved out mountain, the one who made every cat say meow. They were 
are walking with God. And when God is walking with you, you don't fear anything or anybody because God is with you. Why don't you say amen? Yeah, when I found out well, that whatever God's word said, that's what I am. It may not seem like it, but if God's word says it, then it is true. All I have to do and all you have to do is believe in what God has said. Let her on the day the healing rays and the beams will cover you. Malachi 4 and 2 says, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. That word wings is translated zit. Zit, zit. And uh, uh, in, the, in the Jewish vernacular, when, whenever, whenever a Jewish male had on a robe, he would have tassels. And there would be blue tassels at the four corners of his robe. They was to zit, zit. And these tassels would have uh, 613 knots in them which would represent the Torah or the, or the Pentateuch or the first five books of the Bible. In other words, they were to be reminded that they were the custodians of the word of God. They were to be reminded that they were special people of God. And that's what I want to remind you today. The church is still the custodian of the word of God. We must never compromise or make excuse for what God has seen. You don't like it? Talk to him about it. Don't get, don't get mad at the mail, man. I'm just delivering the mail. Yes, this zit zit, the hymn with the hymn, this was the same, uh, this was the same tassel that the woman with the issue of blood said to herself, if I may my, but touch the zit, the touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. She was not just doing something, she was relying on this verse that I put before you this morning. That when the son of righteousness shall arise, he will arise with healing in his wing. Yes. In other words, she knew the scripture. Yes, sir. She was not going on blind faith. Yes, she knew the scripture. Yes, <laughs> that if she would just touch the hem, the zit zit, that she would be healed yes. of her infirmity. Oh, and she got in the way. Got out there where the Lord was. And the Bible says that she touched the hem of his gone. Why don't you reach out and touch him today? Why don't you reach out and touch him today? Yes, if you are watching me online, why don't you reach out and touch him today? Touch the hem of his gone. Touch him today. By faith, you can receive all that God has for you. Touch him today. Let him touch your finance. Yes, let him reach out in faith. Let him touch your future. Let him touch your future. Let him touch your family. Let him touch your failures. Failing is not bad. When you fail, you learn something. When you fail, you learn something. When you fail, you grow. But when the Lord touches you in the midst of your failure, you are on to be a success. Yes, be made whole at this very hour. Wholeness means that you are whole from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. Being made whole. Spirit, body, 
and soul. Wholeness. A plant dies because it does not receive water or sunlight. And we die when we do not receive the spirit of the living God. And when we are not standing in the rays of the sun of righteousness. Malachi 4 and 2 says, And you shall go out and grow fat like a stall-fed calf. The Lord does not want us to be sickly and puny. He wants us to be strong and fat on what he has provided through his word. Instead of losing, he wants us to be gaining. Instead of lack, he wants us to be in abundance. Instead of sickness, he wants us to be in health. Instead of depression, he wants us to have a positive attitude. Stop hanging around people that are negative. Negative. They're negative about themselves. They're negative about you. They're negative. I ran across somebody uh, last year, and they were kind of making fun of me and, you know, trying to say I wasn't going to do nothing with my book and this and that and all that stuff. They had written something, and I didn't say nothing. No, I said, don't say nothing. Just listen. Just listen. I didn't say nothing. Well, this person, and I don't care. They may be watching me now. I don't care. <laughs> But anyway, they was hanging out on my page, and they saw all of the hits I got, over 10,000 of them. And, and they put out, they made a comment, can I come and do a book signing at your church? And I said, ain't that funny. I didn't even respond. But I, would, I said all that to say this, that when you Follow the Lord. Everything will work out on your behalf. If the Lord tells you if you need an operation, nobody likes to go to the doctor, but if you need an operation and the Lord tells you this is what you need, I'm going to be with you, don't worry about it. Go ahead on. It's going to be all right. It's going to be fine. Whatever the Lord directs you to do, it will work out on your behalf. Yes. Doctors are not your enemy. They have been given special skill and insight to prolong your life and mine. And it will do us good if we will adhere to what they are being told to tell us. Yes. So my brothers and sisters, I heard on to a close today. Instead of our failures, we will have success. Yes. In verse two, uh, we will be strong, we'll be healthy. But then let me summarize. The son of righteousness will arise over you. His light will shine upon you regardless of the darkness around you. His righteousness will break forth into your life. And his healing rays and beam will cover you. I don't know about you, but I'm covered. I said, I am covered. I'm covered. When it rains, if you got an umbrella, the rain won't fall on you because you cover. Yeah. And as long as you and I stay under the umbrella of God Almighty, we are covered. Yeah. Yeah. I'm covered. Yeah. Go ahead and throw your bricks at me. I'm covered. Go ahead and throw your insult. I'm covered. We're covered by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, you will receive.
see growth increase. Everybody say increase. 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 Because of the son of righteousness. God bless you and God keep you. We extend the invitation today. Don't you want to be covered by the son of righteousness? Don't you want to be covered everywhere that you go? Everything that you touch will succeed because you're covered. The Lord delights in the prosperity of his servants. If you are out of the ark of safety, when I say out of the ark of safety, you've never confessed that you need a savior. You've never confessed that you need to be saved. You never confess that you have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. If today would be a day to make up in your mind to follow him. So what if I follow him? I just don't know if I'll be able to keep the commitment. The Spirit says, the Bible says that that which we commit, he is able to help us keep our commitment. He can and he will come today and give your life and surrender to him. As we stand on our feet today, come today and trust him. You don't know what he's done for me. The invitation. God, we're grateful for what this day has meant to us, and we pray your blessings upon every person under the sound of my voice. Give every person the desires of their heart. Grant them favor in every area of their lives. And as we depart today, we speak healing, we speak joy, we speak love, we speak deliverance. And as we leave today, we ask that you will smile on Brother Rankin. Give him the healing that he needs in the mighty name of Jesus. And all over this audience, we stand in unity, we stand in faith, believing that it's already done. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion, and the fellowship of Jesus Christ be with us one and all until we meet again. Let us all say together. Amen.